Today we are having the 23rd lecture continuing with passive filters. We had already discussed uh, the first order and second order low pass filters using passive networks. Let us continue with that. It is important that we understand the first order and second order in order to nicely get an intuitive aspect of any higher order filter design. So, <coughs> first order and second order low pass filters were the ones that were discussed in the 22nd lecture. Butterworth maximally flat magnitude characteristic was the feature that was emphasized in filter design and uh, maximally flat delay these are the two important characteristics that we would like to have for our filters or the amplifiers right? or uh, I mean whether they are RF amplifiers or RIF amplifiers okay, or the uh, baseband amplifiers. These are the characteristics we would like to have for these. In some cases we would like to have better noise attenuation property which are characteristic of Chebyshev and inverse Chebyshev filters particularly inverse Chebyshev filters wherein uh, we can locate certain zeros outside the band to get rid of narrow band noise color noise. Elliptic filters again narrow band noise can be very nicely removed and we can permit certain amount of steep characteristic which is steeper than inverse Trebuchet filters for the same order using peaking or ripple in the pass band. So, the ripple in the pass band ripple in the stop band are elliptic maximally flat in the pass band the ripple in the stop band are the inverse Trebuchet. Max, uh, ripple in the pass band okay, is the characteristic of Trebuchet, Butterworth is maximally flat in the pass band. So, Bessel's filters are the corresponding filters where maximally flat delay characteristic is got. Now, when we discuss passive filters we had considered RC, RL filters and RLC filters. Now, we will further go into an understanding of these uh, passive filters. We saw that by having a uh, magnitude characteristic of this type corresponding to maximally flat magnitude characteristic Butterworth filter, the numerator polynomial is just a constant, it has only denominator polynomial and it has only the highest order uh, which has a coefficient as far as x squared is concerned x squared or x to the power 4 x to the power 6 like that these are all Butterworth filters. Then we would like to have certain amount of ripple in the pass band then it can have 1 minus k 1 x squared or in the numerator 1 plus k 1 x squared for the second order filter characteristics 1 minus k 1 x squared plus say 0.21 x to the power 4 or something like that and numerator can have uh, no polynomial in x or you have numerator polynomial which is 1 plus k dash x squared divided by this kind of denominator polynomial or you can have k 1 and k 1 dash both existing this being positive this being negative that will further enhance right. So, in a sense the kind of characteristic that uh, the uh, Chebyshev filter has is something where peaking can occur. So, if it is uh, only con constricting attenuation it can be 1 minus 
k 1 x square kind of thing. Then when you have 1 minus 0.25 x square here you can locate a 0 for example at x equal to 2 that is the point where we have let us say uh, neighborhood noise transmission occurring ok. So, we want to get rid of that or this may be the 50 hertz noise in a biomedical signal right. So, we want to get rid of that fully because it is large in magnitude. So, then we can locate a 0 in the numerator polynomial ok. So, that at a certain point in the frequency domain it goes to 0 of transmission. Now that particular 0 along with uh, k 1 coefficient which is negative which is greater than ok magnitude than this is going to be if this 0.25 this is 0.5 it is equivalent to having no uh, constant denominator numerator and 0.25 here minus 0.25 here same thing. So, that means actually it is going to peak there considerably ok. So, that means it has a steeper attenuation characteristic at the pass band H that is the elliptic filter. Now, coming to first order high pass filters we have um, this uh, with R and L. So, earlier low pass means R and C now high pass means you just replace the C by L then it becomes high pass right or we can have C in series and R in shunt here. So, that at high frequencies this becomes a short and output is going to be equal to input ok and at low frequencies it is going to decouple the output from the input. So, it is 0 of transmission. So, the 0 of transmission exists at DC ok and therefore, and it is going to go towards 1 as frequency goes to infinity. Here this particular inductor is going to make the DC appear as 0 here and at very high frequencies it is going to be an open and therefore, output is going to be equal to input. So, both have the same characteristics ok if for example, the RC time constant of this network is made the same as L by R of this network that is RC is made equal to L by R. That means, if a capacitance C exists you select an L equal to C R square right then these two will have exactly same characteristic which is 1 by 1 plus S by omega say bandwidth. So, this will be omega bandwidth this is the 1 omega bandwidth 1 over omega bandwidth is R C time constant or L by R. So, this is the nature of first order high pass it is easy to design. So, V naught over V i is S C R by 1 plus S C R for the R C network and it is S L by R divided by 1 plus S L by R. So, the magnitude function squared is this ok into conjugate of this in uh, a domain where you have put S equal to j omega. So, when you put S equal to j omega this it becomes the magnitude which is omega C R squared divided by 1 which is nothing but our normalized frequency capital omega x is equal to capital omega henceforth we will use this because this is the way we have started our filter theory right. So, and uh, it is x squared by 1 plus x squared which is what you have as x equal to omega by omega naught or omega by let us say bandwidth. So, the normalizing frequency is the bandwidth of the 
uh, low pass or high pass which right uh, whichever it is that is the normalizing frequency. Omega naught in this case is 1 by RC if it is a RC network and that has been plotted here this is the magnitude uh, and this is the delay function right. So <coughs> the delay function goes to uh, point uh, 5 of this and magnitude because it is square root it goes to point 0.7 here it's because it is square root. So, the delay function is uh, just there is no delay here actually there is a uh, pi by 2 okay, minus this delay okay, as the phase shift uh, the phase shifting function it is pi by 2 minus tan inverse okay, uh, x which is uh, differentiated and that is how we get this function from the tan inverse x mm, function. Design of high pass, band pass and band stop filters can be done starting from the corresponding low pass prototype that is an important theory that we would like to discuss today that how frequency transformation can be easily used to convert a low pass prototype into an equivalent high pass okay or if given a high pass how to convert it into a low pass prototype and do the design in the low pass domain. So since we know all the filter types can be easily designed in the low pass domain we can after converting we can do the design in the low pass domain and reconvert it back to the uh, required high pass, band pass or band stop filter topology. <coughs> now one such transformation for low pass to high pass for example is 1 by 1 plus x squared okay, is the low pass trunk okay, where it is equal to 1 at x equal to 0 and goes to 0 at x equal to infinity. Now do the transformation from low pass to high pass that transformation is x is changed to 1 by x. So x squared changes to 1 by x squared right. So we have this now becoming equal to x squared by 1 plus x squared that is what is plotted here and you can clearly see that at this point okay it is 0.5. So it finally goes to 1. So this is the transformation how does this transformation work in terms of a uh, passive network that we would like to use ultimately. So let us say we want to design uh, first order high pass filter with f naught equal to 40 hertz okay omega naught is then becomes equal to 2 pi into 40 which is 80 pi. Let us design the first order low pass filter prototype okay with omega naught equal to 80 pi and then using the transformation we will get the characteristic and also in terms of the network we know what to do that is the C let us say uh, omega c equal to omega okay, into uh, omega by omega naught which is 80 pi. So we get this therefore from this for a c equal to 1 microfarad for uh, r of 5.7 k we get this 40 hertz cutoff for the low pass prototype. And high pass filter okay, 
is also going to have the same bandwidth okay that is this one will be having its upper cutoff frequency this one will be having the lower cutoff frequency at the same point okay if L is made equal to C R squared. How did this come about? Because we know that from our earlier experience that as far as the time constants are concerned they must be made the same that means L by R is equal to C into R. So, the choice of L is based on this C R square. So, it gives you 15.7 Henry's which is too huge a value realistically to have as a circuit particularly now right and therefore even in olden days about 40 years ago this kind of inductance is too bulky to be used with electronics of uh, even 40 years ago. So, this has been simulated okay using uh, active networks and RC networks okay. So, that is one way of solving this problem of uh, size as far as the inductor is concerned. So, inductor was the first component to be rejected in electronics okay at baseband particularly. So, it is too huge. Now, let us consider building up of a second order RC low pass filter that can be done theoretically using two first order ne networks in cascade. That means actually we have one RC low pass filter cascaded to another RC low pass filter. Let us say it is R1 C1 and this is R2 C2. Then the transfer function is very easily written as DC transmission is 1. So, 1 by 1 plus rest of the things are functions of S okay and this coefficients should be such that the whole thing is dimensionless. That means if this is frequency this should be time constants okay. So, first time constant with just one capacitor is R 1 into S C 1 okay. This is one integration you can say 1 by S C 1 R 1 is one integration with one capacitor. This is the other integration okay that current goes the all way through these R 1 plus R 2 and then into C 2. So, C 2 coefficient is R 1 plus R 2 as far as S is concerned that is once integration using individual capacitors. Then double integration in me means it gets integrated to this and then through this right this is coefficient of S square. So, you have S C 1 R 1 into S C 2 R 2 okay, which gives you S square C 1 R 1 C 2 R 2. This is the easy way of straight away writing down the transfer function of most of these networks okay. So, omega naught the normalizing frequency here S square by omega naught square okay. So, omega naught by comparison becomes 1 by okay square root of R 1 C 1 R 2 C 2 and Q this is S by omega naught Q normalizing. So, please remember our lecture here this C 1 R 1 plus C 2 into R 1 plus R 2 C 1 R 1 plus C 2 into R 1 plus R 2 is equal to 1 by omega naught Q. So, omega naught being equal to this then from that you can get 1 over Q as square root of C 1 R 1 by C 2 R 2 square root of C 2 R 2 by C 1 R 1. If this is to be made that is if Q is to be made very high let us see then we have to maximize this. One way of maximizing this Q is minimizing the denominator problem because all these things are occurring in the denominator of Q okay because this is what 1 over Q. So, this is required to be minimized okay. So, that means R 1 by R 2 can be selected such that this is very small because these are all positive. So, R 1 can be selected to be uh, sort of much smaller than R 2. So, that means R 2 is large compared to R 1 then we can ignore this then you have this as x plus 1 over x kind of thing. So, which is going to be a minimum at x equal to 1 that means when C 1 R 1 is equal to C 2 R 2. So, the best minimum value for this is equal to it cannot go lower than that in a passive network of this type 
if it is made second order filter then you cannot have q okay uh, greater than um, half it cannot be even made equal to half it is always less than half. So, you do not use okay uh, higher order filters okay particularly second order filter with uh, two pass RC networks or two RL networks you will can prove that the same is true with two RL networks L R L R okay. So, uh, it is impossible to get uh, Q greater than half or equal to half. So, what do you do? You that uh, must use RLC networks for getting uh, any Q you desire. So, the best uh, circuit for getting higher Q is a resonant circuit. This is nothing but a series resonant circuit. This has been studied by you in networks right? and we have also analyzed this circuit earlier in the previous lecture. So, what happens? We can therefore, write the magnitude of this from our previous experience as 1 by 1 plus magnitude squared is 1 by 1 plus 1 over q squared minus 2 into x squared plus x to power 4 where x is omega by omega naught and omega naught is the resonant frequency okay omega naught is nothing but 1 over root l into c okay this is equal to 2 pi into f naught. So, we have omega naught as this and q equal to 1 over omega naught c r if you write down the transfer function. The transfer function is something that you can readily write it is going to be uh, 1 over s c by 1 plus okay, s c into mm, r s s squared l c. So, you will notice that q is equal to 1 by omega naught c r if this is s squared by omega naught square. Okay. So, this can be written as okay. so this is s squared by omega naught square and this omega naught square. Okay. So, this is nothing but 1. Okay. Now, by making q equal to 1 over root 2, the coefficient of this can be made equal to 0. Okay. So, then it becomes 1 by 1 plus x to power 4 that is the square of magnitude or it is called Butterworth. Now, if you do the transformation of x squared okay, to 1 over x squared with the bandwidth remaining the same the q remaining the same it simply becomes 1 by 1 plus okay, 1 over q squared minus 2 into x to power minus 2 plus x to power minus 4 uh, which is the uh, high pass function with the same uh, q equal to 1 over root 2 maximally flat that means but about. So, bandwidth of both are the same again. So, second order low pass filter example. So, 40 hertz is the bandwidth. So, you can say L is equal to 15.8 Henry's. Again, you see that it is too huge okay. for maximally flat response Q equal to 1 over root 2. So, R becomes 5.62. While the C and R values are reasonable, the inductor value is too big to be accommodated normally. And uh, we have to convert it into high pass of the same order with q equal to 1 over root 2. So, we just put x squared as 1 over x squared. So, we get the high pass filter char characteristics with L dash equal to L, C dash equal to C, omega naught equal to 1 over root L C, q is omega naught into C into R. So, we get this 
characteristic which is that of the high pass and the network is this right. So, it is uh, 1 minus the low pass is the high pass 1 minus low pass. Now, going to band pass filter. Band pass filter is a combination of low pass and high pass filter characteristic. Obviously, it should be at least a second order because the low pass character uh, the high pass characteristic comes into picture first. So, we have a band pass characteristic this is the high pass characteristic comes first and then the low pass characteristics. So, cascading uh, high pass with low pass okay, results in this kind of uh, behavior. So, it can be just done um, this way, but uh, we have already mentioned that if it is the same kind of network for example, C and R like this or R and C like this it does not matter both are band pass. this comes first and that one right. So, there are there is another interesting uh, network which also this is used in what is called mean bridge this is also a band pass. So, if uh, for example, uh, this is uh, for all these network the transfer function is the same what is it S C R divided by 1 plus 3 S C R r1 is equal to r2 so we get and c1 equal to c2 that means q of this is going to be equal to 1 by 3 i told you that the highest q it can have by design is less than 0.5 so these are all pretty uh, useless circuit for most of the general filter characteristic that we would like to generate that means we should be able to get a q which is anywhere from low value to very high values. Low pass to band pass transformation. So, the uh, x in this case is going to be replaced by x is going to be replaced by x minus k squared by x or this is going to be the same as x squared minus k squared by x as depicted here. So, x is replaced by x minus k squared by x then the entire characteristic gets shifted to where x was 0 that gets back to x equal to k here. So, this is the shift from x equal to 0 this maximally flat magnitude square characteristic or the Butterworth characteristic of first order gets shifted to x equal to k with the same bandwidth right. So, you can see that <coughs> So, you, we have substituted here uh, is 1 by 1 plus x squared becomes x squared minus k squared by x whole squared. So, that is the transfer and that is plotted here. You can see this this is 1 by 1 plus x squared and this is 1 by 1 plus x minus 25 by x okay, that means k is equal to 5 k squared is 25. So, you can see that it is peaking this peak at x equal to 0 has been transferred to x equal to 5 and the bandwidth of this is unity let us say it is normalized with respect to the bandwidth and the same bandwidth is replicated here 
after the shift. So that is uh, 4.5 to 5.5 the bandwidth. So this normally has the negative side getting replicated at x equal to minus x uh, equal to minus 5 ok x squared equal to uh, 25 there. So, x equal to plus or minus 5 this gets replicated. So, the bandwidth remains the same as that of the low pass prototype. Design a second order band pass filter with center frequency equal to 5 kilohertz let us say and the bandwidth of 1 kilohertz. Design first order low pass prototype for a bandwidth of equal to bandwidth of the band pass filter which is 1 kilohertz. So, the pro low pass prototype should have a bandwidth of 1 kilohertz. So, we have uh, selected okay, in this case omega equal to 1 by Rc this is the bandwidth as 2 pi into 10 to power 3. Selecting 1 microfarad we have appropriately chosen R as 159 so that the bandwidth of this comes out as about 1 kilohertz here that is 0.7 because this is square root of the magnitude ok the 0.5 becomes 0.7 or 7. So, then we can note that if you sketch this this way this bandwidth corresponds to exactly okay, the 1 kilohertz that we have designed it for right as the low pass prototype. So, this is the simulated result okay, and it is exactly located at 5 kilohertz. This is what is called the low pass to band pass transfer. Please remember this fundamental thing. It is the RC that determines the bandwidth. Okay. Uh, if this is remaining the same, it is 1 over RC which is also the bandwidth okay, of the uh, so called band pass filter okay. and this just gets replicated this way. Now, low pass to band stop uh, transformation. Okay. Again, if you start with RC, right, you have to let us just go back to this and see how this particular thing is designed. Basically, we have a low pass that we start with this is C and R. So, this reactance is susceptance is S C. So, S E is replaced by okay, S C plus 1 over S L. What is it? This is a, a, an admittance okay, originally S C. Okay. It is replaced by S C plus 1 over S L which means actually its frequency dependence is j omega c. So, this now becomes equal to j omega c okay, into minus 1 uh, okay, over plus 1 over j omega l or this is j omega c into 1 minus right what happens here? This becomes omega c has been taken out. So, it is omega square l into c. Okay. This 1 over l c is really is what is called 1 minus okay, omega naught square normalizing frequency. Right. So, this is the uh, this CR is the one that determines the uh, the bandwidth okay, of the low pass prototype 
and this is the shift this is what we called as x okay uh, that is one, uh, uh, 1 over x squared for example you can call this as 1 over x squared that is k, uh, k squared over x squared okay. So this is the uh, center frequency shift that means it gets shifted to the resonant frequency of the system. So when we just put this this way this is C this inductor is okay nothing but 1 over omega naught squared into C that is the value of the inductor. So we can easily compute this equivalent okay in the frequency transformation and that is how we have designed the whole thing and you can see that that is what and this resonant frequency is at 5 kilohertz 1 microfarad and 1 millihenries roughly corresponds to very nearly equal to 5 kilohertz. So replace the capacitor by a parallel resonant circuit replace the inductor by a series resonant circuit okay. So that way actually a parallel resonant circuit if it is replaced by a series resonant circuit then you have a transformation okay of things from band pass to band stop. So the same uh, thing only thing is this frequency scaling effect now is the uh, resonant frequency is 1 over 2 pi root L dash C dash okay and the original C that determines the bandwidth that gets scaled to okay C into bandwidth square divided by center frequency this is normally called okay. 1 over q square okay. So uh, the uh, it gets scaled to okay this kind of thing and the inductor is to be chained to okay L dash by 1 by bandwidth squared into C okay. So that L dash C dash becomes equal to 1 over center frequency squared as so the resonant frequency remains the same. So if I now chain these capacitors and inductors in this manner then the Q remains the same okay as before okay and this becomes the band star. It is equivalent to changing X to X squared minus K squared by X okay to the power minus 1 now. So first transformation is okay x to 1 over x and then that x can be changed to x squared minus k squared by x okay. So the parallel resonance becomes a series resonance circuit and L dash and C dash get scaled accordingly so that the Q remains the same. So that is the band stop characteristic exactly produced. Now let us do the same thing 5 kilohertz and 1 kilohertz okay 5 kilohertz is the place where we want the notch and 1 kilohertz is the bandwidth of the notch. So actually design first order low pass filter prototype for a bandwidth of bandwidth equal to bandwidth of the band pass filter. So this is the low pass filter prototype with uh, 1 kilohertz bandwidth somewhere here right 0.707. So if you extend the same thing here this is going to be again 1 kilohertz and this notch frequency is going to be at 5 kilohertz. The network is again same 159 ohm resistance this one micro farad gets divided by phi squared because that is the Q phi by 
1 kilohertz okay 0 0.04 micro henrys and for it to be resonant at 5 kilohertz the inductor value is 25 milli henrys right microfarad. So, we can easily design this scheme starting from the low pass filter prototype and this is the notch filter. Next, let us consider using inverse Chebyshev filter as given in the figure. Right? Now, this is an important network now. Inverse Chebyshev filter okay, means what? We have already understood this. I want a characteristic like this. Let us say uh, it, has, it has maximally flat characteristic up to the bandwidth and at this point right where I want to get rid of a specific frequency right is uh, going to be like this let us say okay. So, this particular point is going to be the frequency at which it is rejected totally the this component of frequency is rejected. So, this can be obtained by a magnitude function which is 1 minus n 1 times omega squared. The omega squared is now uh, currently being replaced by us as omega is equal to x. So, that means this is our x squared. So, 1 square root of 1 plus x squared plus x to the power 4. So this is the kind of character we would like to have. So, you can note that at x equal to 0 it is going to be just 1 okay, and transmission and as x goes to infinity right, this is going to uh, result in uh, let us say if you have something like this right, this particular thing is going to result in this is square root of omega to the power 4 is going to dominate as the x increases to a large value. So, this also becomes x squared and this becomes very nearly equal to okay. at x equal to 0 it is 1 at x equal to tending to infinity it is going to be n 1 squared that is the transmission because it is going to be dependent upon n 1 squared because this omega squared gets cancelled with this omega squared. This is asymptotic to n 1 squared. So, this is a very simple design therefore, it uses just a tapped uh, inductor along with the capacitor that is all with the resistance. So, if you write down the transfer function of this again right you can note that this inductor in series with this is the resonance circuit which means it is series resonance that means actually it becomes 0 okay, at a certain frequency when omega L 1 is equal to 1 by omega C. So, that means omega L 1 equal to 1 by omega C these two reactances get cancelled together and it causes the thing to become a short circuit. So, the transmission is 0 that means the 0 is equal to zero of the po uh, numerator polynomial is at 1 by L 1 C. So, that means actually we have this uh, uh, the N 1 okay, which is easily controlled by us okay, with respect to uh, omega. Omega is really equal to let us say small omega by omega naught omega naught is the bandwidth that is it is that of the pole okay, omega naught. So, what is omega naught? Omega naught is the series resonance frequency of this what is it? It is equal to 1 by root of total inductance L 1 plus L 2 into C. So, this frequency is lower than the 0 frequency the bandwidth is lower than this. So, this let us say is roughly the point at which we uh, have this uh, the bandwidth. Okay. 
So, the bandwidth is located when this series resonance occurs there okay, the denominator polynomial goes to the minima value that means it has a peak it has a tendency to peak. So, it can have a peak also depending upon the q right. So, we will select the q such that that the it is maximally flat let us say. So, that value of q at which is maximally flat for a given problem let us work out this problem it is interesting I want for biomedical applications uh, let us say a 40 hertz bandwidth I have a predominant component of 50 hertz present. So, I locate this uh, what is a 0 at 50 hertz. So, my omega 1 is going to be omega z is going to be 2 pi into 50 hertz. So, that is equal to 1 by square root of L 1 into C. So, this omega z is fixed based on my desire to get rid of this as much as possible therefore, I put a 0 of transmission at this frequency. Then I select the Q of this network in order to make ok. So, N 1 has already been fixed because of the choice for this right. So, uh, that is the thing N 1 is equal to ok this uh, yeah because it is uh, 2 minus 1 by q square 2 n 1 is equal to 2 minus 1 by q square this is the way we are going to select the uh, 0 so that it becomes maximally flat n 1 is equal to omega p pole if you consider this as the pole frequency what is it omega p is equal to 1 by square root of L 1 plus L 2 into C as the pole. So, omega p by omega z ok is d uh, n 1 which is less than 1 ok because omega z is at a higher frequency than omega p. So, this is 50 and there is 40. So, f uh, f uh, Right, that p divided by f z ok f p by f z therefore, is 0.8. So, n 1 is 0.8 square ok and uh, you can therefore, note that right, this when we square it this becomes square. So, this becomes 1 minus 2 n 1 uh, omega x square ok plus n 1 square omega to the power 4 that is why that 2 n 1 coefficient has to be same as minus 2 plus 1 by q square. So, that makes the coefficient of x square and in the numerator and denominator same that means it is maximally flat that occurs at a q of 1.18 ok and r to make that q equal to 1.18 is 3.34. So, I would like you to simulate this and uh, see the characteristic of this which exactly resembles what I am showing you here, here. So, this is the characteristic that is normalized of course of the filter that is the Chebyshev filter that I have designed now you can see if 1 corresponds to the bandwidth. So, if this is equal to 40 hertz this is equal to 50 hertz. So, it is 50 by 40 which is 1.25 scaled to the bandwidth. So, this is the filter that we have designed ok and uh, and it is going to be uh, this kind of characteristic that we should have in order to make it work as a good filter for uh, let us say biomedical applications. 
it can be improved by cascading one more uh, first order filter so that this gets attenuated and the characteristic looks now like this right. So, uh, most of the white noise gets removed by one more first order that is cascaded to it and here does it does not touch. So, this is the characteristic that finally, you can get by having a second order filter cascaded to a first order filter. So, you can improve upon it. So, this is the kind of design that normally gets carried out okay, by us very easily. In fact, we do not need any help of uh, higher order equations and uh, higher order mathematics for understanding filter design. Let us now just for conclusion sake uh, start with some uh, random specifications right. Let us say I have a, a, a filter design that I have to do for um, getting rid of two major neighborhood frequency components okay in uh, let us say baseband signal processing. That means, I want a low pass filter okay which outside the band has two major narrow band noise components okay that must be got rid of. So, if I have to get rid of two major narrow band noise components and white noise of course. So, what I have to have minimum to start with and what is the topology? How can I intuitively get this topology okay just by knowing the requirement right. So, let us start with this problem. Its bandwidth is known, the signal bandwidth is known. So, I want to approximate it to a box like characteristic with this, this is the bandwidth okay, this is 0, this is the low pass filter I want to design. So, I have the bandwidth as let us say, I will say omega naught, earlier I have been normalizing always uh, the whole thing with respect to the bandwidth of the low pass filter to prototype. Now, let us say this is going to be omega 1 noise component, this is the other noise component. So, these are major. Then apart from that I have to attenuate the noise considerably uniformly. What is the minimum order that I should select and how what should be the nature of this? Obviously, I want to locate my two zeros here. That means, first thing that you do is the numerator polynomial is okay containing 1 plus s square by omega z 1 square. So, we write down the numerator polynomial first this may be some constant h naught 1 plus s square by omega z 2 square. Then the denominator polynomial Right. Let us see. Denominator polynomial should be greater than the numerator polynomial. That means this is already fourth order. So the minimum thing that I should have is, let's say, I'm cascading to second order. Okay. omega let us say p 1 q 1 then 1 plus s by omega p 2 q 2 plus s square by omega p 2 square. So, we have seen in the earlier this thing the numerator order if it is gyan or m the denominator should be at least one order higher okay. So, that means I have to have this as at least okay. I can do better by ha having higher orders, but this is the minimum that I require. So, straight away write down 
the uh, transfer function of uh, the required polynomial that you have to generate. That means it can be just that this one thing can be realized by using one second order network, another can be realized by another second order network and third is a first order network. So, I know that I can cascade this together and definitely get what I want. After that how do I optimize the filter design? Obviously, the uh, location of all these uh, poles and zeros, zeros are already fixed, the poles will make it such that right, I should get for example, maximally flat here and obviously, there will be ripple here. Okay. So, what is the kind of ripple you get? If it is maximally flat, it is going to be just this and then it is going to be and because of the uh, this order dominating ultimately it will all go to 0 ultimately. So, this is the characteristic I am going to get and it can be maximally flat here. Let us say I want to have better attenuation characteristic what should I do with it? I will permit okay, this cannot peak because this is going to be just going on decreasing this is a going to have 1 by 1 plus x squared for its magnitude under the root. This one will have obviously a tendency that can cause a peak. This one will also have a tendency to cause a peak. So, there can be two peaks okay, apart from the peak at 0 caused by this first order there can be two more peaks that means basically I can have it going like this okay, and going like it is actually it may uh, therefore, in increase about this right. So, it may be the kind of characteristic you may be able to get. So, ultimately I know that it will be some kind of if it is equiripple like this and rippling at this point. This is the best I can do with selection of Q's and selection of these different pole frequencies omega p 1, omega p 2 and omega p 3. So, I know what I should get. So, please know that all this peaking frequency will be close to the bandwidth. So, that means omega p 1 is going to be uh, let us say uh, the first uh, peaking frequency and omega p 2 is the second peaking frequency and the q of this q 1 q 2 should be greater than q 1 because every such thing can be uh, concluded very uh, intuitively this way that this is always attenuated like this and then that attenuation of this first order can be compensated for by uh, a next peaking circuit. Okay. So, let us therefore, see how it is going to be looking like. So, first order is going to go like this because it is attenuating continuously on peaking only at omega equal to 0 we would like to have the next one which is going to peak like this. So, this decrease is compensated for by this increase. So, it becomes maximally flat okay, up to this point. So, thereafter both of them are decreasing. Right. So, at most it can therefore, become maximally flat only up to this point and thereafter okay, both of them are decreasing. So, it will be decreasing at double the rate right and then I have to have another peak which is higher than this. Okay. So, that this decrease can be compensated for by this increase. So, it will have to be higher. So, the q of the uh, second, uh, second order should be higher than that of the and it is going to occur close to the bandwidth. Thereafter, of course, all these three things are going to cause attenuation and therefore, they are going to decrease only. 
So, this is the way we are going to have the characteristic of all these blocks individually considered and that is how they become maximally flat or they can have a ripple ok. That means, if this is located further close to the bandwidth this may be permitted to decrease and then increase. Similarly, this one ok can be permitted to decrease and then increase and that is how you get the ripple ok. So, the Q's of elliptic filters will be higher than the Q's of uh, let us say uh, inverse Chebyshev filters ok and all this inverse Chebyshev and elliptic Q's will be higher than that of the Butterworth filters blocks. So, these are the intuitive concepts that you can derive out of just knowing ok about the second order and first order. So, try out this as trial and error just have the second orders and first order cascaded ok and see what happens to the uh, multiplied uh, higher order network. This is the way right higher order filters are designed and that particular uh, thing does not require the help of any sophisticated tool or anything else ok for understanding ok. So, this is the conclusion that we are going to have that passive filters are very efficient and power efficient I am saying they do not require any biasing arrangement etcetera and precision passive components can be easily got. Therefore, you can actually build these filters ok uh, very easily if you understand the rudiments of the filter theory ok. In the next class we will just see how and why active filters came into existence and one natural way of thinking filter design because most of the passive filter designs have already been standardized and elaborate tables exist for variety of filter design ok. Uh, these are all in normalized frequency domain what should be the Q, what should be the normalized frequency ratios in order to uh, ripple of so many decibels ok etcetera. And therefore, one ready way of converting all this into active is just to get rid of the inductor and simulate the inductor using active device, resistor and capacitor. So, in the next class we will see how inductor simulation can be carried out with the help, help of the active device primarily the op amp and resistors and capacitors. Inductor simulation using capacitors.